one of the beautiful things about birth and the birth ceremony is that these women meet themselves on the journey and on the journey they have the opportunity to grow, to rebirth themselves, to lay down what doesn't work for them. And that takes moving through discomfort and that takes transparency. And we just have a hard time <laughs> over here in, uh, in Africa, even in India, they were just kind of like, yeah, this is temporary. They have an understanding of impermanence that we don't seem to oh, grasp. Wow. And, it, and that changes the mentality of the mindset in birth. Welcome to the Birth Education Center podcast, hosted by myself, Care Messer, an entrepreneur, birth educator, and doula. My team and I want to help you discover your options in birth and postpartum, how to find your voice, and how to use that voice to navigate our maternal health care system. You and your baby are not just a number. This information includes doulas too. Now let's get started. I get to introduce you today to someone that is a part of my soul family. I met Hayes Hawk at a postpartum doula training, an innate birth doula training, my gosh, 12 years ago, something like that, 10 years ago. And it was such instant contact magnetism, like we knew each other that I think she thought I was hitting on her. She's like, I'm straight. I'm like, me too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not hitting on you. I just know you. <laughs> and we just became that soul family that can be away from each other forever and still pick up right where we left off. And I can't even, I don't even know how to explain who Hayes is to you other than she has studied with midwives all over the world. She is a advanced senior midwife student. She's a midwife assistant. She's a master birth worker. She supports family from the beginning to the end and through the postpartum period. She's a spiritual mentor. She's phenomenal. And she leads with her heart. And that's the lens that she sees the world through. I just can't say enough of yummy things about Hayes. I just, I truly do love her. And Hayes, I'm so grateful that you said yes. And this is the first of a few podcasts that we're going to do. Hi, my love. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I'm so excited. For We're probably going to do this the whole time. Absolutely. Be speaking in unison. Absolutely. Hayes, I want you to kind of tell our listeners, we're going to focus this one today on parents and what you are helping them bring into the birth experience when you train your parents and live the experience with them. Can you tell us what was the catalyst to get you into birth work? Because this is truly your calling and who you are. Yes, it is, which is crazy because I did a really hard pivot, a crazy hard pivot. I was in the entertainment industry. I was dancing and acting. I had been doing that my whole entire life. I am a theater kid. So musical theaters and all, all of that was my jam. It was my wheelhouse. I got pregnant with my son and chose a midwife. I was the first in my whole tribe of women to get married, to have a child. And Somewhere in my consciousness, I said, I'm going to find a midwife. I'm doing a home birth. First of all, me saying this was really bizarre because I had never thought I would have children. I never thought about it. I was wow. like, I'm a dancer. I'm theater. I'm on the boards. I'm going to die a thespian. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and no one in your family had ever hired midwives or anything like that? Were they hospital well, births? They had, actually. My grandmother and my grandmother's mother all 19 of them home birth, right? Wow. And then my mom had me on a military base because I was an Air Force brat. But they didn't really talk about it until I was pregnant. And then I got all the lowdown, right? right. <laughs> I got all the lowdown. But my midwife's best friend was in town and she said, I'm more than willing to support you during your birth if you would like to. And I had the intuition and the hit to say yes. An hour and a half, two hours in, I was like, what is this that you're doing? What is this called? You're saving me. Oh my gosh. And I took my journal and I started writing down everything. I said, so what did you do? Where did you train? What else? Oh, you're certified in this too? Oh, what else are you certified in? And she said, honey, why don't we wait till after you have your baby and we can talk all about this? You're like, I have a new job. No, no, you don't understand. Says me like, be damned. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. And I said, no, I'm fine. And I kept writing and I wrote down everything that she did. I Absolutely everything. She said that she was in nutrition, that she was a Reiki practitioner, that she was a life coach, that she was a massage therapist. I didn't do the one she did. I did hella work, but 
that was the one that was my jam, right? But everything that she had, nutrition, all of it, I did. After my son weaned at three years old, I started getting certified in all the things. And I just never looked back. I just kept looking forward. I started off as a postpartum doula. Then by accident, I became a labor doula when I was dropping off postpartum food. And then I became a midwife assistant. Then I noticed the difference between the education for my home birth clients versus the hospital clients. And I thought that was not fair. They should all learn about physiological birth. Yep. So I went to midwifery school because I wanted to understand the medical aspect of birth and be able to speak to it and define it and explain the complications and the protocols, give them their birth, right? all the things. So that's why I went to midwifery school. Then I happened to find out that I'm good at it, <laughs> right? Oh, you're so, good at it. Oh, thanks, friend. You're good at it. Um, so then I started really diving in, but that was my journey into it. And then it was the education piece. And I love educating parents. I love education, period. I come from a family of farmers and educators. And so it's kind of like my wheelhouse. And I love the looks on the parents' face when I'm explaining things to them and I give them their power back. And I, I love my childbirth education class. I know you love yours. And yep. You love all the things you do. It's so much fun. I'm probably going to always do it. You can't always. not, right? Once you get the bug, it's like you can't stop talking about it. And that's, no. it doesn't matter what group of people you're in. The vagina will make its debut, and that is what's going to be talked about. And that is what's going to happen. Absolutely. Yep. Don't invite me to Easter dinner unless you want a side unless conversation about... that will take over the room about birth and vaginas. That's all. Yeah. It's what we do. It's what we yeah, do. Yeah. And it's what we're happy about. Well, so that's how I got into the whole journey. After studying with midwives all over the world, a ton of different countries. Yeah. I want to know what you gained that we have lost in our knowledge path over time and patriarchy. Ooh, ooh, that's big. That's a big question. What have I learned? Okay, you know what? The thing, there's a few things. What I noticed the most being in Africa, India, Cuba, Mexico, is America has a thing about comfort that does not really exist in the rest of the world. Ooh, not the way we do it. We have good. instant gratification needs and we got comfort. Like we don't want to be upset. We don't want to go through things. We just want a smooth ride. It's really sad actually, because one of the beautiful things about birth and the birth ceremony is that these women meet themselves on the journey and on the journey, they have the opportunity to grow, to rebirth themselves, to lay down what doesn't work for them. And that takes moving through discomfort and that takes transparency. And we just have a hard time <laughs> over here. And in, uh, in Africa, even in India, they were just kind of like, yeah, this is temporary. They have an understanding of impermanence that we don't seem to oh, grasp. Wow. And, it, and that changes the mentality of the mindset in birth. That's the biggest part that I found. I saw that firsthand when my daughter and I, my brother took us to Mexico like six years ago for Christmas and we were in Cancun and there was this magical water of four shades of blue all the way out. And it was, it was breathtaking. I was just like, I am in God's place. I don't know what it was. And we, I took a picture. So did my daughter on her phone. And as we were walking, she's like, just a second, mom. And I was looking over this beautiful beach with dogs and kids and everyone was so happy. And I could just feel how delicious it was. And I was like, I'm so grateful to be here right now. And she goes, look at this. And she showed me her picture and she had used an app to take out all the people, the dogs. And it was this beautiful plain beach with beautiful water all the way out. And she was so proud of it. And I looked at her and I went, oh my gosh, Angie, now I know why it's hard for me to teach your generation. And she went, what? And I said, you just took out reality and made it your own. I said, I cannot oh, believe wow. I'm sitting here. That's the missing piece. Look at the beauty in front of you and the age and the wisdom and the dogs and the, the actual life that's taking place instead of creating what you think you want it to be because that's not reality. And she, of course, she looked at me like, whatever. She's like 19. What are you talking about, Shut mom? up, lady. You know, <laughs> God, you're so old. Can we just look at my pretty picture? And it's so ancient. I know. And then she goes, oh, look. Oh, there's a dog shadow. Let me take that one out too. You know, because like there was, oops, there was a little bit of a shadow. 
I, I was blown away and I went, oh my gosh, if that isn't a snapshot of where we're at. I don't know how to do hard things. I'm terrified to do hard things. I, I just know I can't because I have no pain tolerance, right? There's no understanding of where we are and who we are. And one of the, the things that you told me years ago is birth is where we find our edges. It pushes us to the edge of ourselves and that's where we discover who we are. And I was like, that's what happened in my birth. And I didn't think I could do it either. And then synchronicities, one thing led to another and I had to do it natural, physiologically, find the right providers, practice, do all the things. And I still didn't even know what I was doing until after that body came out of my body. And I went, holy crap, we have been lied to. Look at how powerful we are. See, that's the thing. So when people ask me, why would you do a physiological birth? Why would you not get medication? I'm like, why would you check out? I understand though, like the women have the right to birth the way they want to birth. Absolutely. How they want to birth, where they want to birth, all that. I absolutely agree in that. But I also believe that they should have the chance and the opportunity to meet who they are in that space before just getting medication to numb the whole thing, to check out. I think that even if they're doing a little bit of a trial of labor, that is everything. That they find out what their metal is, where they can go, how they cope. We can't expect mamas to teach coping skills if they don't have coping skills. How do they get coping skills? By going through difficult times challenging times by being uncomfortable by being in pain so then you know you what happens if you, the mother doesn't have coping skills and doesn't have the willingness to be present to her own experience this phenomenal experience then usually we have children who have no invested interest they're just kind of shuffling along they can't keep the feet up they're just like making noise as they walk as they breathe as they live as they you know <laughs> and i hate to sound so judgmental but i've seen it so when i'm educating mamas and they know that they do want an epidural they do want pain meds and things like that i will speak to them and educate them on the possibility of not getting it right away like having some time at home where you're laboring and you're experiencing yourself and you and your partner can really come together. And it's, you know, that they've dropped into the expansiveness of the birth space. And then once they're in transition, get that epidural if they need it, if they still need it. If they still need it. Well, yeah. and your body will work better if you're already in that rampant labor state than if you Absolutely. get it early, right? And if our job is to cut down on interventions and cesareans and all that kind of stuff, Let's get that epidural towards the end if you need it, but have the skills in case the epidural doesn't work. I just had a mom that had that happen and she was like, I felt everything, but I couldn't get out of the bed. It was horrific. And I'm yeah. like, we don't plan for that, right? But if you have the skills to be able to cope and she couldn't move at that point and she was angry and I'm like, I totally get it. I, I totally get Absolutely. it. And when we go in as the epidural is a therapeutic tool at a point, exactly. and not, uh, it just takes my fear away because it actually doesn't take your fear away. It exacerbates it because now you are a stuck pig with all this stuff coming at you and you haven't prepared. And that's where I think we get into trouble and, and it's disempowering for us because we don't know ahead of time that we are a sovereign human being, a conscious human being with choice and all the power is already within us. That's what's really true about yourself and about birth. I absolutely agree. And this is where I spend most of my education with my parents is to explain to them how powerful they are. And the reason why I said, if every woman knew what I know about who they are and how powerful and phenomenal and immortal they are, really, actually, the world would look absolutely different, completely different. And think about it. A lot of us weren't raised with that innate knowledge because our parents blocked it out. They weren't conscious with us. Like, like I came from boomer parents, you guys, all the things that you've heard, I had those, probably triple of that, plus a mental illness threaded through there. How can I expect to be any different than how I was raised unless I'm looking for something different? And I think that's why people find education because they're looking yeah. for something that they don't really understand what they're looking for. They get a whole bunch when they find us, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. They find me because they want a sacred transformative event. They want a physiological birth. They want to realize the sacred in the moment and in themselves. And that's why they find me. I know that's why they find you. Well, that's the only way they can find us. Because if they read my stuff or hear my stuff, if it doesn't click with them, I'm not their person. And I'm not their person Super either. okay with that. 
Super okay with that. Me too. I'm super on the hippie side. Our people find us. I, you know, I feel like I'm really grounded in spirit and really grounded in my understanding of nature and the cycles and because I live there as a root worker. I'm, that's my jam. And I'm also really good at being a life coach. You are. Which you are too. This is how we, <laughs> another place we align, that we can call them forth, that we can inspire in them the ability and the willingness, which is key to the whole thing, their willingness to drop into that ancient birth map where time is expansive, not linear, where the vortex is right there. They can see that portal and they step in and out of it and they flow and everything is mother-led and divine. It's such a sacred experience. And when we read about it in textbooks, we watch a TikTok video on positions That's such the surface of what birth actually is and tapping into there could be something bigger than that. It's, it takes bravery. It takes courage and we haven't really been called on for that. Right. You know, we've done our books and we've gotten our degrees and we've whatever. And the hardest thing we've done is take a master's test and physically like birth was the hardest thing I'd ever done physically. I'm just chubby kid. I ate my popcorn and hamburgers and never thought about why would I exercise? And birth challenged me physically, mentally, more mentally and emotionally than anything else. And I was doing it by myself. No one supported me in my family. I had to figure it out. And I'm grateful actually for that because it did push me to take it all on on myself. Cause I mean, parents can come into our classes. We can teach them whatever, but at the end of the day, The bond is between them and their partner, but it's really the bond between them and their baby because that's the journey they have to do together and nobody can do it. Nobody can do it for them. Nope. That understanding right there helps create the mindset that they need in order to do this labor walk. I love it. The one thing that I always want my families to understand that it's not their birth, it's the baby's birth and it's their labor, their edges, their courage, their bravery but they're walking with this baby, but it's their baby's birth. So the labor, you own it hundred percent. This human being is, this is what's setting their patterns for their lifetime. And it's you to advocate you to keep them in the forefront, all of that kind of stuff. What would you want your parents to know? And what do you have them know from the very beginning? If you could have them before they get pregnant, which is always when we want to get you before you have sex, before you do come it. to us before that. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll help, help you even have good sex. Let's come to yeah. you before that. If you could get them in the very, very beginning, what would you want them to know about this soul journey? Ooh. Wow. Okay. It's so many things, but I'll start with this, that on this soul journey, they have the opportunity as they begin their birth ceremony to lay down the things that no longer serve them, to lay down the things that are not going to be contributing to the parent that they want to be, the partner that they want to be, you know, dying away to the small self, like anything that has not been excavated that needs to be, this is the opportunity. And I really encourage all my clients to realize that the pregnancy ceremony part of this experience is the opportunity for transparency, to create intimacy through brilliant conversation. And to discuss all the things. Pregnancy is the time to discuss how you're going to be in that postpartum period. When the baby gets here, it's kind of too late to start having those conversations. But to get on the same page about how long are we breastfeeding? Cool. Okay, are we co-sleeping or are we? No. Okay, great. And how long are we doing that? How long are we baby wearing? Are we baby wearing? Do we need a stroller? You know, all those conversations, even how we're feeding the child how we are disciplining the child, how we're educating the child, all those conversations. Spiritual, religious aspects, what are we doing? Well, everything. And in that realizing of what they truly desire, they also, why I said that they have to excavate, is because some of the things that they believe, some of the things that they walk with, they have inherited like a family heirloom, not even their own opinion. So the excavation means pulling out the things that they don't believe that they just took from society or family or friends or TV and then cultivating the truth of who they are and the truth of who they're going to be as parents and a partner. And that way throughout this journey, they are just team us. They're very bonded. They are clear. So any unsolicited opinion, 
just passes by, <laughs> passes by because they are very clear of who they are as a team, as a family. I finished up a class last night and one of the parents said, I wish we had known all this stuff before we started the journey because we have never been closer. We have had deeper conversations than we've ever had. We feel like we are team everything. And she said, I was so hesitant to do this birth class because I thought, Ugh. and not that I didn't think you were going to step up, but I, I didn't know how that was going to look because I really felt alone through this whole pregnancy. And I realize now that I wasn't alone. We just didn't know how to have those conversations. And I exactly. didn't know how to drop my walls and be vulnerable because I am a type A control freak, which so am I, girl, I get it. And I was afraid he would drop me. And she just sobbed. Right. And that's the thing. That's the thing right there that that the barriers that are established, not necessarily because they've chosen that, but society does that. Right. And when we're focusing on the relationship too, the baby is not always the most important thing. Nope. That relationship is the foundation of everything. So we want to fortify that relationship and create the conversation and the ability to have nonviolent communication. That's what we're doing. So that childbirth education class is yes, about childbirth. Yes, it's about the stages of labor. Yes, it's about terminology and physiology, all of that anatomy. But it's really about how do we grow together, shed together and survive this postpartum entry well, so that we are still thriving and we as parents, because they do go through a, a rite of passage, a, a rebirth of themselves because they're laying down what no longer serves them. But you, to do that, you need the clarity and understanding of conversations and getting that the partner has the role, a specific, really important role, I feel, in that labor journey, in that birth ceremony. And the, we always understand what mama's doing, but that partner is essential to the anchoring of that mama so that the mama can show up powerfully in the vulnerability to really get it. And we're redefining that because we're in this history, in our lovely capitalist patriarchal bullshit system, do we have partners, whether they're male, female, whatever, where it's been modeled that they are in intricately involved, deeply vulnerable, working through the hard shit, holding yeah. the space to allow her to fall apart picking up exactly. the slack in the regular life so that she can fall apart, right? And I think our biggest hurdle is trust. I think it's trust too. I like, really do. I, I keep this whole house going. How are you going to do that? I pay all the bills. I organize everything. I make sure you've got lunch. I make sure I've got lunch. I make sure the dog is walked because we have taken upon us to do everything because we don't trust because we have already been let down. It's not even our partners. We've already been let down. Yeah, sometimes we don't give them room to show up great, but, you know, because we're doing it already. But we have to encourage them. That's one of the things I do with my clients is to see where they can create an opening and a possibility. And then for the partner to, to get all the things, how this has been working, what it could cost you. I have them go through the whole thing. If you guys keep going this way, you might end up over here not so very happy. And it, the edge is trust for us. Like it's, we're seven months along, I'm still working full time and running the household. How do I let my guard down to let my partner step in? Because I just, he's never done it before or she's never done it before. And yeah, they, they have proof. They have proof, right? Of course you have proof, but you also have to get back to, you pick this person for a reason. You chose them. They love you. You love them. Let's get back to that part trust and start them. operating them. from that. Like when I say I really need more help with X, Y, Z, I'm not saying you're shit. I'm saying I need more help with just, that's it. That's all I'm saying. Please don't take it any other way. And same when the partner says, look, I'm saying that every time I do something, you shred me because I don't do it right. Two pieces. That I don't want to do it. And, and he or she is saying that in love for you to look, take a look and go, you're right. I do that. Figure that out before the baby comes. Because yeah, postpartum exactly. will kick your ass. Well, it will kick your ass. Like it just will. It's too much. No sleep. It, but it can be beautiful and bonding. If you've already done it in pregnancy, it just carries over because now you have this little being that all your focus is to take care of all three of you. 
It's so yeah. different if you do it in pregnancy. Yeah. Exactly. It's space creating if you do it in pregnancy. And it's so you sexy. Know? You can breathe and it's very sexy and it's, it's very, very intimate sexy. and it's very yummy. And don't we love that? You know, another thing that I really stress with my clients is the ability to slow down and to live a slow life. Amen. Especially in that last trimester. It's like, what are you doing? Why, why so busy? Why so scheduled? Like slow down, slow down. So that you can enjoy your partner, you can hear your partner, you can hear yourself. Slow down and enjoy your food. Let all your senses take it in. Slow down as you're preparing the food so that you are intently, intentionally putting good energy and love in that food. Because it goes to the baby. Slow down. Because it goes to the baby. Slow down. Because if you slow down in pregnancy near the end, you're ready for postpartum. And the slow down mm -hmm. when you're integrating your whole phenomenal birth experience and learning your baby and then learning each other again because you're different people because you just went through this phenomenal experience. Transformative slow experience. Down. Oh, the yeah. slow down is so important. It's so important. I have mamas who are like, the mama brain, I just can't. I was like, it's designed that way, sweetheart. Per it's designed that way. This is the perfect design, this female body. And the fact that you... I have mama brain, <laughs> pregnancy brain, lactating brain, all of those things is designed that way so that you go more inward, that you tune in, you drop in, that you connect to the planet, to yourself, and to your partner, to the baby. Let it happen. Don't fight it. It's happening for a reason. Slow down. It makes such a difference in postpartum. And that's one of the reasons I encourage get those meditations out. Take a nap every day. Like when you're holding a baby and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not getting anything done. If you've already practiced, you don't care about the dishes. You don't care yeah. that the dog's not walked yet. You don't care that exactly. you haven't done the laundry because you're cherishing the moments of slowdown because you've already practiced it. And exactly. one of the biggest things with meditation or doing visualizations is you're making neural pathways because that repetition and your body goes, Ooh, let's start making some brain waves. You get used to being in that present state. Your nervous system starts to regulate, which when we're high aspect type A, <laughs> we're in survival all the time. Our baby will be in survival because they're patterning biologically their nervous system against our chest. So sl that slow down is what's going to help them chemically and biologically set their standard. It is so important to meditate and do visualizations and slow. I also agree with that. And I also want them to listen to themselves and their partner and whatever they say that makes them go, ooh, that makes me feel good or strong. Write those things down. If your partner says something that's so affirming. You know, affirming to you, like it makes you just feel inspired and motivated, write it down and put that in there with your meditations and your affirmations. So good. I also tell my clients, my mom and the dad, or the mom and the mom, or the dad and the dad, I will say, practice now for who you want to be in the birth ceremony and who you would like to be in the postpartum ceremony because you're not all of a sudden just going to be the special magical unicorn. Live as if you already are that. Yep. That's how you create it. Yep. That's how you create it. Oh my gosh, I miss you so much. <laughs> I know, my girl. <laughs> Listen. <I'm... laughs> Why can't I hug you we, right we now? We need some hang time. We need some hang time. I'm going to come. I'm going to come to San Diego. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, People are always asking me the same with mindset. I want to hear your take on mindset. How in the heck can I do this? If they even get an inkling, maybe I want to try a natural birth. Okay. I want to, maybe a physiological birth is what I want, but I'm terrified. How do I do it? Where do you start with that? I usually start with what they're terrified of. Like I want to know. I do a lot of internal prompts, journaling. I want to know what is it that they fear? What aspect of this do they fear? And then I will correlate that to what else have you ever feared in your entire life, right? Have you done it anyway? Did you just leave it alone? What did you do? Because this is happening. This birth is going to happen. So right. you're going to have to walk through the... <laughs> We're walking through it. So let's do the work. <laughs> so let's do it. And I, I, cause I really would like to know. And then I just ask them about their nervous system. Like when does their nervous system get activated? And then I work on 
calming their nervous system, bringing it back to homeostasis, looking at their vagus nerve and giving them exercises and breath work around that, and then leading them into what they consider their worst fear. They have to trust me. I have to trust them. We're talking all the way through it. And we do a guided meditation visualization of their worst fear. And I'm leading them through to actually stepping up to the moment of that fear and looking at it and and then dissecting it and then looking at the worst possible outcome. Right. Right. What would you do? So most of the fear that's happening around birth is because they don't have a plan if things go to the left or sideways. And I usually am able to calm them down by just saying, okay, say this happens. What are we going to do? Great. Let's write that down. Okay. If yes, if postpartum depression happens, what are we going to do? We're going to get a therapist on board. We're going to talk to somebody ahead of time. And then we're going to have them on dial if we need them. Right. All the things, all their worst nightmares. Just, I walk them through it and slowly but surely their fear starts to dissipate because I bring them back to the one person that they can count on, which is themselves, Themselves. (laughs) right? I'm like, have you always showed up for yourself in life? Why would this be different? Have you managed to move through difficult times, challenging times that you thought, oh my gosh, there's no way. Have you moved through that? This is no different. So let's reframe these thoughts and these ideas and find a way that we can mindfully walk with them. So it's, a, it's again, working with those neurological pathways because we have to reframe their story, right? Because we're creating something new. Because we're creating something new. But once they do that, they really get it. They get it and they let it go. Yeah. The backup plans are key. Backup plans are absolutely key. I'm curious if you have found this because sometimes it's, I don't want to tear. I don't, it's very, it's all surface stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't want my mother yeah, not to show stuff. up, you know, so there it's all surface. And then yeah. as we start digging through it, it's, it's trust. I don't it's trust, trust myself. All, I don't trust my always. strength. I don't trust my partner. I don't trust. It's always trust. And, and, and you know what? That's really here again. That's in America because we created a society that's full of distrust mm-hmm. because we have proof, <laughs> right? Right. It's, I don't know, I don't know what we can do about our society. I think what we're doing is actually allowing for there to be shifts and change in the consciousness around that. Education is the key. Education around birth, around sexual reproduction, around sexual health, all of that will change the whole thing. And I wish we were doing that earlier. And you know what I'm finding too? My families are, they're different than they were 15 years ago. 15 years ago, when families would come through, they were, well, I want my kid to be an attorney like I am. Well, I want my kid to be, my grandma, you know, wanted this and I did this and now I want my kid to be. Now they're like, I can't wait to meet this. Baby. Yes. I'm kind that of That took a long time to, to happen, but they're it doing did, it. Right. But there's a shift and I'm seeing that they're using correct anatomical words with their kids and they're saying, you don't have to be touched if you don't want to. And it's your private space. And if you don't want to hug so-and-so, you don't have to, and you can respectfully decline. And if you're uncomfortable with so-and-so, you let me know. And so they're teaching their children to trust their gut, move through the world with consent And that's a huge shift from 15 years ago. So I'm watching it little by little get sexier and sexier. And I'm like, can I reach more people? How can we reach more people earlier so that they can get on board and figure out who they are? Because those chakras, those power centers that are inside you are innate in you. And they are powerful. And when you tune into why can't I find my voice? And maybe that's where they've let themselves down. Well, and see, that's the thing. So on the pregnancy journey, once you're starting, think to think about all these things, to have conversations about these things. Where have I not spoken my truth? How do I feel about saying no? Because look, one of the things I do with my clients, first and foremost, is can you express what you like and don't like? Can you say no? If they can't, that's where we start. Yep. That's, girl, because I need you to be able to speak up for yourself. You're going to need to do it as a parent. Yep. Because otherwise everybody's going to raise your kid but you. Yep. And you'll be checked out and angry. Yep. And you know what? I even remember I didn't know what I liked and what I didn't like. I didn't know how to speak up for myself at all. I didn't know who I was. I didn't even have a favorite color until 
I was like 35 because my mom told me my favorite color was purple. So that was my favorite color until someone actually asked me that at 35. And I was like, she goes, I think you like pink. Everything you have is pink. And I was like, you wear only pink. Maybe. I mean, it, what, it just didn't even occur to me. I'm like, wow, I have really been walking through life, not as my own life. That's why me going through the excavation process with my clients mm. to see what they really like, who they really are, what they truly believe, why that is instrumental in the early days. A hundred percent. I have this little excavator thing going out. I've got a t-shirt that I like as an educator, I need to say, what are we excavating this week? What are we excavating? Because you do, you have to dig through who you really are and what you believe, because that's the only way you're going to find your voice around it. Exactly. And that is the key to navigating the birth ceremony, because it'll show up. How do you define the birth ceremony? What's your definition of birth ceremony? Is it from conception on? No, I have it in categories. So the pregnancy ceremony is the 10 months of gestation. The birth ceremony is when labor begins, right? Beautiful. And then the postpartum ceremony is that whole time. For the next 50 years. three years it could be. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, three years I was going to say, but yeah, 50. And I put it in ceremony because it is that. Really, everything that happens in each of these moments is huge. And it incorporates the understanding of the energetics and the emotional and the physical and the spiritual and the mental. So that's why I say ceremony. Because once you've gone through a ceremony of sorts, it is a deepening and understanding of who you are within that process. And since most of our births in America are in the hospital, how do you take the ceremony from pregnancy and birth into the hospital while also prepping them ahead of time? What are you prepping them for? What can be happening? Because you and I both know the cascade of interventions, what's going to be brought up, how fast it goes. And we've been training on the slowdown, the connection, the deepening, because that's what we do in our classes. How do you prepare them for what they're going to actually be experiencing in real time? Well, I start with the fact that we've all had birth education, whether we took a class or not, just through our family, friends, society, TV, TV. movies, (laughs) right? Damn TV. (laughs) And then I go through explaining the protocols, explaining the complications and how they are handled. And I educate, like literally I feel like birth education is the power. Like it is knowledge so that they know what they're saying yes and no to. Yes. Right. So I don't even have this huge issue anymore. We bring that birth bubble from home to the hospital. We change up the room, the, the, the vibe and the frequency. And the people who come into my client's room enter the room with reverence. I let them know that this is not another day at work. For you it is, but for them, they are in a sacred moment. This is a transformative event. I need you to re-enter the room. I need you to slow down your words. I need you to speak softly. Gorgeous. Best advocate you could have in the room. (laughs) Everybody needs a haze in their room. (laughs) You know, and it's really how we hold that, that room, that container in the room. Because if we hold it that way, like literally, I don't have these issues as much as I used to because of the way I'm educating my clients. So my clients are the ones who are like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to push that back for three hours. We're like, they're very clear. Okay. This Pitocin is bothering the baby. We're going to turn that off. Yep. Slow it down. Like they're powerful in this space. So that's how I'm prepping. I do a lot prenatally. And I'm fine with that. I think it's worth it. Not only do I build a relationship of trust with my clients, I trust them. They trust me. We communicate really well. We understand each other. But by the time we get into that space, we are in sync. There's a lot of telepathy through me and my clients. We don't even have to speak. We get it. Eye contact. We're like, it's brilliant. So they're already clear what's happening. And they will say, they will voice Please don't come in here talking about the size of my baby anymore. Please do not mention birth pain meds because I already said that I would ask if I wanted them. And if they are not listened to respectfully, I have had clients who are like, you're not welcome back in the room. I love it when it's not me. I love it when it's not me saying you're fired, right? I will. I don't care. 
but I, it's so empowering to, to see and witness my clients stand up for themselves, speak for themselves and say that. It's their it's space, the it's their experience, <laughs> it's their paying the bill. 100%. They're paying the bill. So if that person is disrespecting you, you're going to take it? Oh, it's been beautiful to watch my parents when they go in and if they don't have a doula, you know, and that dad or that partner is on, like they know that they're in charge of silent, safety, privacy, warmth, and darkness. Like, how do I make this the sex <laughs> yes. space, right? Yes. <laughs> and exactly. having those five elements of birth, they've got it on their cell phone. They're ready to go. They do stay home longer if they can. If yep. they happen to be at the hospital for whatever reason, it is, can you please quiet your clogs down? Can you please wait to talk to her until she's done breathing? And they speak in a whisper and they do set the tone. They've got their music or their affirmations going. And they were like, we had the best team. We didn't push till we were ready. And we only pushed for 40 minutes and we did this and we did that. And I'm like, yes. Like, it's the biggest turn on ever. I love it. It's the biggest turn on. It is. For us, it's the biggest turn on. That's why I'm we just don't like date. Sitting there like, the- like nothing can get Maybe us the- more happy. <laughs> And it's, it's a twisted way we've ruined our it's dating twisted. life because we're like, do you know how big you have to be spiritually, emotionally to compete with birth for us? Yeah. We're single for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> can be, can be huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's such a turn on. I love it. I love seeing my clients make the moment juicy. Because it's always within their realm to do that. Yes. And then, then when they do that, I know that this is going to be straightforward. This is going to be a beautifully delivered vaginal birth. It's going to be everything because they are clear about who they are and they're working together. Exactly. I love it. It makes a huge difference. So if there is a hiccup and we're having a birth we weren't expecting or a complication or an intervention we weren't expecting, I have found that when parents are really educated, they have their voice, they ask questions, they slow things down. I had a dad who... He said, we went back to your induction class. We asked the questions we needed to. We kind of governed our cesarean the way we wanted it to go. And everybody stepped into it. We had a conversation like they were normal human beings and not a white coat that we were intimidated. And we worked as a team and created something as beautiful as it could be for what we didn't want and had a beautiful baby through it. And I think that that early education and connection with partners ahead of time so they understand what their options are makes a huge difference in those hiccups because they don't have to be hiccups. It's still a birth. They don't have to be hiccups. Exactly. That's why I go through all the things so that they're prepared to make some really conscious choices and powerful choices within the the space. It is about conscious choice, 100%. And that's how we prevent birth trauma because we are making choices along the way and we're expecting and demanding that we're heard. And I know that a lot of times that bucks a patriarchal system that says, why do you care about a vaginal birth so much? And why do you think you need to be heard when I know everything? It's a power dynamic that we can recognize, but we also don't have to play into it anymore. I refuse. Yeah. (laughs) And I love that we're finally starting to figure that out. I feel like the shift in consciousness and people saying, yeah, what the F? I am so not going there. Yeah, that's the kind of fury you need because you're a feral birthing human. I really enjoy when I'm working in that space in a hospital situation with OBs that I absolutely love and respect and we are working collaboratively. It's a beautiful dynamic and more of these spaces could be powerful like that if OBs would not view doulas as the enemy. We get to work brilliantly with midwives. It's a beautiful dynamic and it works so well. And they see us as support because that's all we're trying to do. And when I have that, because I'm blessed to know and love some OBs who are absolutely incredible. There's nothing like that when they walk into your space, right? They understand physiological birth. They expect it. They're like, yeah, let's leave them alone. Let's do this. I love that. And if there's more of that, hospital births, the outcomes, the trauma, everything would be different everything. So here's my prediction. Uh Uh-oh. We've got Gen Zers coming up. Have you been to the doctor lately? And they all look like they're 12. Okay. You're like, (laughs) whoa, you're my doctor. That's scary. Like, do you even, wow. Have you graduated from high school yet? So we've got Gen Z on board. 
So yeah. I feel like that shift in medicine is coming because they're like, what the F? Like they question things they and question they everything. start to look at things and they want all the different views of the system. I think that's how we break the system. And I'm like, I am the best cheerleader on the path for Gen Z. I want you to get everybody out of our political system. I want you to revamp our medical system. Like I'm ready for it. Yeah. They do not just take it face value. They do not. Yeah. And my Gen Zers that are having babies are questioning everything. Like, why, why, why would I do that? I'm like, exactly. Why would you? Why is this so Don't. important for this? Why do they want me to do that? Why do they say this? Why do I have to take this test? I'm like, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't. Absolutely. Okay. So before we wrap up, what encouragement would you give a pregnant person, a mom, a woman who is on the fence about, am I strong enough to do this? Do I dare put my eggs in that basket? Do I want to try a physiological birth? Do I dare step into that? Because that is their edge, right? Even just going to think, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm not getting an epidural. Because if I tell them, they're going to say I'm crazy. And I'm not going to get support. What encouragement would you give them to know about their body and who they are before they walk into that? Oh, you know what? When I have clients who question themselves in this way, I usually take them to some place in nature. We either go camping or we go to the ocean, but we are someplace in nature where they can drop into the truth of who they are. A reason why I feel like society and the powers that be try to disconnect us with nature and all things planet is because if we understood that we are that and that we can move through the seasons and we can move through change and we can move through discomfort, we can move through the dying away process and we can move through all of that with our breath, with our consciousness, with our intention setting. Like this is just a different understanding of it when I bring them into nature and I inspire them to trust the process of birth and to know that it is a perfect design. And the less interventions, the less protocols that they fall into, that the better they'll do. And then again, of course, we go through, have you ever let yourself down? Be your ultimate cheerleader right now. You can do this. Like it's been done for, for centuries. Eons of time, <laughs> right? Genetically, right? the only reason you are here is because it worked all the way back. Because it worked. How we got here is through free birthers. <laughs> Right. Literally in the back <laughs> right? of the woods on the edge of a shore, wherever that baby was coming, there was no due yeah. date. They were due in spring or possibly summer. Like what a light and mellow natural transition. Like, yeah. Oh, can we go back to that? Oh, I know. But I also remind them, I'm like, look, you are hiring people, care providers, OBs, midwives, and whatever to be there in case you need them. So I want you to reframe it. Birth is not a pathology, but pregnancy is not a pathology. Postpartum is not a pathology. You don't have to expect that something's gonna be going wrong. Look at it as the, the, the science that it is. It's all designed this way. So trust yourself and trust the process and drop in to the simple truth of who you are. You are a person, a being who moves through all the challenges of life and all the difficulties of life with as much grace and ease as you possibly can. So continue that. You can do it in birth. You can do it in birth. You know, it's about the mindset, you know, if they could not like it, but they can enjoy the work. It can be difficult, but they can enjoy it. Oh, it can it's be so true. There's such an edge powerful. of that. There's a look, yeah. Power, pleasure, yes. pain. It's oh, it's so all of that, beautiful. which is like sex. Mm -hmm. So don't if you if you like it to hurt so good, you might be fine. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. <laughs> you're not wrong. And it is that deeply human connection, emotional, sexual, spiritual. It's all of it with a power you will never understand until you walk through it. Until you walk through it. And you'll be changed. Forever changed. 100%. It's beautiful. Hayes, where can they find you? And how can they even do consultations with you? What's going on? Well, right now, what I'm getting ready to do and set up is virtual birth coaching. I have had recently, just during the 
you know, the panorama yes. that we experienced. <laughs> I did a lot of virtual birth coaching. So it was just people who just wanted an extra boost, who felt like they needed some more guidance and some deep inspiration and motivation around birth. They were in Boston. They were in Hawaii. They were in, I love the they were all over. for this. Yep. Yeah. It's really great. And just lately, like last year and this the, earlier this year, I've been doing it again. Like it's the need has been coming up. So I decided that I would do a virtual birth coaching for people who want a little bit more or a little bit more time to dive in. So I'm doing that. And that is so much fun for me. I love it. Again, it's just education and I'm just, that's my zone. So I love doing that. And right now that's going to start in April okay. and that will be, it'll be on my website for that. And you guys who are listening to this amazing podcast, get a special discount that Care will let you know about. And Great. otherwise I'm on Instagram at I am Hayes Hawk. I'm on Facebook at the very same. And my website is HayesHawk.com. Gorgeous. Hayes, thank you so much for being here today. And I'm so excited for our next conversation because we're talking to birth workers next time. But I Woo! truly cherish our time. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I adore you. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, it's your body, your choice, and finding your voice is your power. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us in all the places, and go to birtheducationcenter.com for our blog and more online education classes. And we'll see you next week.